The United States of America, known as land of the free, home of the brave, America has come to symbolize freedom throughout the world. People from all nations and from all walks of life have called America their home. America has welcomed them with open arms. Indeed, the famed Statue of Liberty is the embodiment of the fulfillment of this dream. In New York's public education system alone, its student body represents 145 countries of the world. The United States is also a very spiritual country, allowing freedom of worship to its citizens. Indeed, religion has traditionally played a large role in American society. Many of the original European colonists came to America for religious reasons. Religion still has a major influence on American politics and culture, even more so than in other industrialized nations. As a liberal country that respects its citizens' right to worship, America has a deep affinity with Supreme Master Ching Hai. With her boundless love and compassion, Supreme Master Ching Hai has provided humanitarian assistance to many parts of the United States. In 1993, she sent relief teams to provide financial and material assistance to the victims of the six Midwestern states that were severely affected by heavy rain and flooding. On December 27, 1997, at the benefit concert organized by the Supreme Master Ching Hai International Association, A Journey Through Aesthetic Realms, Supreme Master Ching Hai generously contributed $100,000 U.S. dollars each to the Vietnam Children's Fund and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. The following year, on December 18, 1998, the Supreme Master Ching Hai International Association organized another benefit concert, One World of Peace Through Music, at the prestigious Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles, California, the venue of the Oscar Awards for many years. On this grand occasion, Supreme Master Ching Hai once more contributed generously, with two charity organizations being the recipients of her love. St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital received $150,000 U.S. dollars, and the Starlight Children's Foundation representatives smiled broadly, having received a check for $100,000. And in the face of the worst human tragedy to ever occur on U.S. soil, on September 11, 2001, Supreme Master Ching Hai had also responded by immediately sending relief teams from around the country and all over the world to Ground Zero in New York City. Supreme Master Ching Hai's financial contribution amounted to over 300,000 U.S. dollars to organizations aiding the victims. In addition, Supreme Master Ching Hai was awarded the Los Angeles Music Week Certificate of Commendation, the commendation of dedication and outstanding service from the Mayor of Los Angeles, and the highest honor at the 2006 Annual Tele Awards. Supreme Master Ching Hai continues to this day to extend her loving compassion to all parts of the U.S., from Virginia, Ohio, Kentucky, Alabama, to California, Florida, Texas, Hawaii, and other states. We now invite you to listen to the following discussion with Supreme Master Ching Hai and our association members entitled, Recognize Our Own Greatness in New Jersey, USA, in June 1992. There was a story about uh, friends. I don't know where I read it, but it goes like this. Uh, friends met each other, a couple of friends. And then uh, afterward, <laughs> afterward they went home, you see. And then the host, the friend, who are the host, telephoned to the f wife of the guest, saying, Oh, I know now. I know now your husband like... Sate bamboo, yeah, something like that. 
uh, salted bamboo. So the wife said, no, 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 no. He doesn't like salted bamboo. I know him very well. How would he like salted bamboo? And the host said, I saw him eating her salted bamboo all the time, you know, bamboo shoot, eating there all the time during our meal. So next time he come, tell him that we have a lot of bamboo for him. <laughs> So the wife said, no, no, it's, it's not that, it's not that. I bet you he like chow mein, yeah? So the host cannot believe it, but since she is a wife, so he tried that. They say, so the wife said, next, next day we will come and you will put the chow mein in front of him and you see, and you see what I mean, and put the, the bamboo in another corner, yeah? The same, same table, but you just put the chow mein in front of him. And then you'll see what I mean. And truly, he just keep eating chow mein all the time. <laughs> and so the host was very puzzled and asked the wife for the secret. And the wife said, oh, you don't know, he's so lazy, he couldn't move his chopstick to the other corner. <laughs> That's why whatever you put in front of him, he just eat it. <laughs> hmm. So it might happen to us also, yeah, that we just love what we are used to and what is in front of us, and we do not look further, and we miss many things. So uh, any time in a difficult situation or different situation, uh, please stop and think whether we are truly that, whether this position or this small knowledge do truly serve us in eternity or not or just serve us a little bit in this world where we can live only up to hundred years at the most. Understand? And even they serve us a little bit like this, they harm us in the long term if we cling to that knowledge that I am such and such person. We limit ourselves. That's why many people cannot <laughs> become a so-called Buddha huh? or enlightened very fast or to the great extent just because they are too attached to the habitual knowledge or their, their customs of a way of life. Mm. It's all right to, to be uh, aware of our ability as a, maybe a doctor or an engineer or manager of some field, but it is not wise to cling to these position and knowledge as a matter of importance. We teach ourselves to be disciplined, to recognize what is good and what is not, and what is better for us. In that case, we are also the teacher, because if you do not teach yourself, no master can teach you. The master only instructs you, and you have to teach yourself to do it. Say, I know this good now, you have to tell the mind to do it. And, that's, and that is the way to be self-master, mm. and that's the best way. Yeah, so never let the ego, the so-called habitual mind, uh, get into the way and uh, dare not to take criticism or a little bit of uh, straightforward teaching, even from our uh, fellow practitioners, because sometimes they are wiser in spirit. They are older in uh, age of the soul. Yeah. Sometimes we are younger. Yeah. Or maybe we are newcomer. Or maybe they are newcomer, but they know better. It's different. You can never say a newcomer is not better than the old comer. Yes. Mm. It depends on the person. Mm. Sometimes some newcomer is uh, so used with the teaching already, maybe in the past life or because of their sincerity, or maybe they came from a very high level of planet, of, uh, of consciousness. They came down just to finish up their journey, or they came down just to help with the mission. So we can never tell, we can never tell. But even uh, new or old, we need sometimes discipline for the mind, yes, in order to understand a greater teaching. It's very difficult. And sometimes uh, we are proud of our old, I would say, knowledge, you know, like uh, we have been with the other teacher and we know other teaching and we think we know everything. It also happened. 
I don't mean everyone is like that, but it might happen like this, and it make trouble for us more than helps. Yes, it's okay that we have been in the kindergarten or we have been in the primary school, but nothing to be proud about it. <laughs> If now you are in high school and you're proud that you have been in the <laughs> primary school, then you're in trouble. Understand what I mean? Yes. Not that the high school teacher is jealous of the kindergarten teacher, but it's bad for you to always think of the primary lesson and forgot that you're in high school. The mind is nothing more than a computer, which we fix up before we descend into a lower vibration of the universe. This is a lower vibration corner of the cosmos. So now, there are many corners of the universe which contains different uh, atmosphere, different vibration, different information. Yes. So now we go from the coarse level to the finer level. Mm -hmm. And before that, maybe we were in the finer level and we descended into the coarser level. And as we descend down, we pick the computer by the way on the second level and fix it in, in order to get the information in this world, and to survive in this world. It's just like um, you see some of the UFO people from the ET, they send their computerized men and all kind of computer to go out and pick some of the earth, thing like that, and come back and uh, analyze it. Yes, yes. And in order to descend into our world, they have to have UFO. Yeah, and they have to protect themselves with certain protection. That's why they couldn't stay very long sometimes, maybe because of the coarse atmosphere and vibration of our world. Hmm. They are not always spiritual beings, huh? No, no, no. They might come from one of the earthly planet, just like ours. But the fact that they have UFOs, it is because they're more civilized, more intelligent. They have more knowledge about electronic uh, and all kind of other um, uh, informations and uh, energies. And they have sometimes different uh, resource. So they have um, different maybe metallic uh, resource uh, or some kind of other matter, different matter than us. Maybe their gold are more pure and their crystal are more pure, or the diamond are more real, <laughs> thing like that. And they have it more in plenty, whereby we don't have that much. Diamonds in some of other planets they use to build aircraft, to build UFO. And here we use it just to shine on the ear, earlobes, yeah? Because we have so little in quantity. This is psychological effect, you know, the rare thing, <laughs> it's more expensive and more appreciated. Mm. So in uh, many other worlds or planets, they probably are more honest, so they use all of their resources to build things for the common interest of the public. Yeah. And maybe because in our world, uh, not everyone is dedicated to the common good of all men. Therefore, resources and a rare commodity <laughs> are held up somewhere or commercialized in a way that uh, is only benefit the few mm. and privileged, and the rest of people uh, cannot use them, even though they have brilliant ideas sometimes. Even some of the scientists may have brilliant ideas, but they lack of finance or the lack of uh, connection with the higher authority, and they cannot make use of their brilliant ideas. And if they want to go to get in touch with some of the top, then they have to bribe, bribe the bottom. <laughs> you understand? And so they don't have the money, and they don't have the connection, and many die without recognition. But in other words, if you are talented and intelligent, then you are openly worshipped and uh, appreciated, and then they put all the talents together and make use of them. 
That's how all the worlds are more civilized, stronger, and more stable. And they can build all the aircrafts that our world couldn't even dream of. For example, the UFO. Hmm. It's a real thing, the UFO. Especially you already seen on the newspaper and photograph. Yes. So I'm not talking fiction. <laughs> Your newspaper can support it, the mass media, and so many evidence about that. Now, if our world are more uh, probably spiritually up, uplifted, then the intelligence of the people may be a little bit higher, and so we might be more tolerant toward each other and more appreciative of each other's talent and helping each other instead of killing each other. And who get rich become the envy <laughs> of all the people and things like that. Maybe our earth have enough resource, just that we do not know how to use them, and each one just kind of uh, exploit it, and just to get the benefit for oneself, and do not care for the next twenty years or two hundred years, do not care for the next generation. Therefore, we have not uh, been able to catch up with other planets, that's all. Those who came with UFOs and that are not necessarily very high advanced spiritually brothers, you understand? They just came from a more civilized planet. Our planet before, according to many research, are more civilized than now. We have many more um, instruments that we don't have now. And many of the cities of civilization has been found, yeah, according to research, in some of the deserts and things like that, which show the earlier civilization. It's this very, very uh, prosperous world before. So how did we come into destruction? Probably jealousy, <laughs> the wrong use of good things, the lack of uh, moral discipline lack of virtues. So now we have to begin again to build up a moral foundation, a virtuous way of life before we can go into higher civilization. Because civilization, power without moral foundation, without virtues, is the cause of destruction. It's more destructive than not. We have known through our history that uh, even in our own world we have invented many kind of incredible uh, weapons eh, which destroy <laughs> the whole city <laughs> in no time. Mm. Or well, we have the intelligence to invent things, <laughs> but sometimes we have not enough the discipline to make use of our intelligence. Therefore, in our path of the light and sound of the kingdom of God, we have to combine moral discipline and wisdom, because without this we will be lack of love. In the Buddhism, there is a comparison between uh, the king of Maya and the Buddha. The king of Maya is the one who has the same power as the Buddha, more or less, but he has no love. <laughs> the only difference between the Buddha and the king of Maya is love. Mm. The Buddha loved to give, to rescue, to help, and the Maya king loved to destroy, to threaten people with power and violence. And the Buddha used love just to reason, with, to, to help them. That's why when we are in this world, we are under the control of this uh, so-called negative force, huh? love to destroy us. Mm. And sometimes we are also inflicted with this negative, destroy, destructive power. That's why sometimes we feel we are very destructive also. And uh, intentionally or unintentionally, sometimes we become destructive. Yeah. And we don't even know it sometimes. We think it's nothing because we have become mm, dull, right, in compassion and in understanding. 
through poison, through violence, through wrong thinking, through carelessness, through ignorance. We have lessened our intelligence, lessen our compassion. So now we have to start anew, whether we have a lot of compassion or not. We have to start anew, to check up our behavior, our moral discipline, and our compassion every day by this so-called diary. Yeah? Just check it yourself. Be your own master to know where are you going and how much positivity is contained within your heart. Just you know is enough. Even if you cut a tree without thoughtfulness, you know, without necessity, this is a kind of lack of compassion. Understand? Because our feeling has become so coarse that we do not understand a tree. If you kill one person, you might think it is very great, because you can understand that much, that a person do feel hurt and all that. But then when we kill an animal, we think, oh, it's nothing. Then slowly, <laughs> slowly, slowly later, we become coarser and coarser until we can kill men. Understand? So if we begin from tree, if we can have love for all beings, even uh, our surrounding, and protect them, then we can protect more even of the animate beings, like animals, and then even more for human beings. Everything starts from ABC. <laughs> if we don't start somewhere, we, we will go further and further into that direction. Therefore, destructive power we also have, huh? just we have to control it by meditation, by keeping the discipline, by checking our percentage of love and compassion, how we make use of it every day, whether we can make use of it. The more we make use of it, the more we have them, and then the more we become used to it, this loving way of life, and our computer mind are more used to it, good informations, and then later he will only give out good information. Whatever we put in, it comes out. <laughs> it's the mind. And the mind is a very important instrument that we have to use in order to live in this world. Otherwise, we don't need it. If we go beyond the second world, we don't need this mind anymore. You cannot imagine <laughs> a being with our mind, but it's possible. Just like if you are diving into the sea and you are so used with mask and uh, diving suit, and <laughs> after a long time you think you need it. But when you go to the land, you don't. And if you stay in the sea too long, you cannot imagine living without oxygen mask and diving suits. But it's possible. All the people on the shore, on the land, they don't need these instruments, right? So the same. Many beings in the universe, they don't need <coughs> what we have as the mind, and we couldn't imagine without it, but it's possible. The mind is only necessary here because of the atmosphere of this world, so we have to wear these clothes also. This is a kind of clothes that we wear. We don't need them in the higher world. So when we float in the meditation, we don't float with the body. We float with our own self and the real self have no clothes and no need of physical body at all. That's how we fly very fast. If we have this one, it's not easy. But nevertheless, we are already in here, we need it, just like we are in the ocean. Inside the ocean, we, we need the diving suits <laughs> and all kind of instruments. All right? So keep them, keep them intact until <laughs> you uh, go up to the surface of the water again. Mm? And we can do that during meditation, so we leave our body. It's very difficult to train people in this art sometimes. Therefore, the safest way is to take them while they're asleep. Yeah, therefore, sometimes you sleep and you have a dream of beautiful words and things like that. That is because your mind, uh, in some of the moment, can capture some of the experiences of the higher world. And sometimes you wake up and you just suddenly caught the glimpse of light that just disappear, as it's a leftover 
from the fantastic meal. <laughs> Therefore, there are many ways to uh, help the disciples, not only by meditation. So before you sleep, please meditate a little while, okay? That helps your soul easy to ease out of the body. During the sleep, the Master takes you in different world and teach you different things. When you uh, go back, it depends on the level. If you are a little bit lower still, you might remember, but uh, more higher up, it's difficult to remember. But still, your soul retains everything you learned. That's why you became a changed person, and you don't know why. But still you change, huh? Still you experience comfortable life and miracles in your daily life, and you don't know why. That's why. When you are a child, you don't remember you take how many, how much milk, but you grow all the same. Huh? You don't remember it. Sometimes you have an eye closed and half open, and the mother takes the milk in, and then later the mother asks you, Have you enjoyed the milk? No. Why? I haven't any milk. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, when we were very young and taken to some uh, beautiful royal palaces sometimes, or beautiful fair, and when we come home, we don't remember, right? Only the parents know that they took us there, but we children don't remember. Maybe we went there and just sleep. Nevertheless, we were there. And all the people recognize that we are such and such sons and daughters of such and such parents. They know us, yes. But maybe we don't know. <laughs> and when we grow up, we know. Wherever we go, we know. So similarly, this is a lifelong practice. And actually, we are given the human birth just to know how great we are. But many people are born as a human, and then they enjoy the physical pleasure and uh, getting interested in different, uh, I'll say, surrounding. Therefore, they forgot the motive of their coming. Sometimes you go to the supermarket, you want to just buy one piece of cheese, and then you end up with everything else except cheese. Is that not so? Happened to you? Oh, okay. Then you know. <laughs> we are shy tracked, yeah, because outside they just they just happen to arrange beautiful flowers or different fairs or some other toys and everything, and then our eyes are all <laughs> wild and you know we cannot see the cheese anymore, and we can't even remember the cheese. Yeah, it happened like that, huh? Similarly. The world of Maya, of this world, are full of temptation and beauties of the physical nature, so just to tempt us, to sidetrack us, to spend all our spiritual energy in this world, and forgot to go home. So we got to use it for a more noble purpose. So our purpose is to know ourselves, to know how great we are, not to identify ourselves with a little position of this world, or little wealth, or little intelligence, or whatever achievement we have in this ephemeral world. Sooner or later we have to go. I must remember that. It's easier for you to remember after initiation, after we have been cleansed of much karma, and we feel lighter, and it's easier for us to comprehend many things and to accept many things. I do hope and wish that you are sincere in your own commitment and to discover your treasure, your power for the use of yourself and mankind. We are very happy to have you with us today on Between Master and Disciples. Please tune in to Supreme Master Television every day for insightful and inspiring lectures from Supreme Master Ching Hai. Healthy Living is coming up next. May your spirit be light and bright with God's blessings and grace.